Thank you, Georgia. So this is going to be broadly the structure. I won't go into it. We will in much detail because we experience it. We will start off today with a um, by putting you into breakout rooms, groups basically, and inviting you to share with each other um, a discussion for just 10 minutes around those four questions. So where did we start your design scapes, scaling journey? What are you currently working on? Um, how is your scaling work different to what you might normally do? Um, and share with each other maybe one major success that you feel rather happy about um, that you've uh, accomplished so far. Um, we'll put those questions in the chat as well. Um, so should you get stuck, um, then you can read up. The key point is to have a conversation. Um, and I'm sure that you remember most of the questions. So Georgia, shall we? And we'll bring you back. You get a one minute warning. We won't be joining you. Um, so it's a sort of space for you to kind of exchange and then we'll, um, we'll do the next part. So you get a one minute warning and then you'll be, now you'll be guided into your groups. And it's I groups hope. of two, groups of two. It's two groups of three. Oh, how many are we? Five, six, yeah, groups of two. Groups of two. So let me, in the meantime, repost those questions. If you want any help, Joda, let me know. Yep, yeah. nope, I've assigned everybody. Perfect. Okay. Good, so let's sorry. start. Marco, Marco, sorry, have you seen uh, something pop up for you to join a group? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Hmm. I might have to, that's strange. It, it says that he's assigned, but has not yeah. joined the breakout room thing. No. Oh, we have Philip entering the waiting room, Kirsty. Shall I just, I'll try to move you to another group because it says you're assigned. Maybe I can go out and re-enter. Okay, now I see it. Perfect. So just click join. Wonderful. Hi, um, Philip. Philip, welcome. Can you hear us? Are oh, you still connecting? Just uh, Tomo is in a room on, on his own. So, so if Philip can join Tomo. Perfect. Yeah. Hi, Philip. Uh, so we've um, we've started the event. So um, Georgia will put you in a small group mm -hmm. um, to have a discussion about your scaling journey so far. Um, we'll repost there are some questions and we post those. Tomo, we are going to send you and Philip to the same breakout room. There was okay, a sorry. change there. No, don't worry. Yeah. I just clicked and I was in a separate room. Uh, oh, I, right. I jumped sorry. again. <laughs> we are in, there's two groups of three. Um, so should I put Philip back into with yeah. Tomo? Yeah. Okay. And do you know if Tomo has any chance of going back to break a room three? Uh, I put him in, I put him in. Tomo, can you see a function that invites you to join? Uh, I'm not seeing it. I sh the break up room um, thingy, right? Yeah. I'm not seeing it now, actually. Uh, Tomo not joined. I'm not sure what the issue is. Uh, oh yeah, it says like you have been assigned to breakout room. Breakout yeah. room. Yeah. 
Good, great. So, <laughs> well done. Um, how do we do the chat in the groups? Is that possible? Do we need to join them? Um, no, I can broadcast to yeah, all. Exactly. Oh, because you're the host. Sorry, Judah, you've got all of the, because you're the main host, don't you? Yeah, broadcast yeah. to all again. I put it in the main chat anyway. We, they don't see the main chat, so they, we need to broadcast it to them. So how are we doing on the challenge? Of course, not loads. Okay. Um, it's a, ver a very odd function because you, you get a, a limit on words you can broadcast. Okay. So anyway. Were there enough? Was the limit large yeah, enough? I just, I just sent two messages. Yeah, we, we also saw it on the top of our Oh, oh did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in the for we if I look at the jam board, it's quite full. That's nice. So how are we doing on the clusters? Mm. Yeah, I'm looking on it. It's quite em well emptier on the lessons learned. I don't know if everybody actually. Yeah, I was waiting to see if they. But yeah, oh, cost I, I guess they will not do it while they're talking. No. So try and grasp the real motivation of potential participants. Example of groups. to each stakeholders we need to we've got about four minutes to sort of come up with some clusters on the jam board mm -hmm. oh well maybe a bit more because i'm gonna give a little bit of a little bit of a talk so um albert are you doing the clustering do you want to then talk to those clusters and invite people to have a quick quick chat explaining them? Uh, so for them to explain their challenges, you mean? So yeah, just kind of to say, so we've clustered your challenges into whatever two groups. One seems to be about X, the other one seems to be about Y, and the third one seems about Z. Sorry, yeah, I just right. So, okay, there, so there seems to be one on... So of course, I'm still of products requires different knowledge and distribution. Um, okay. So there's like a challenges with connection in the bottom left corner. Mm -hmm. right? so Compared to presence activities to online. Yeah, across the real motivation. I mean, that one's a bit. Yeah. So this is about engaging, is engagement, isn't it? Engagement and yeah. need. Yeah, I didn't want. Well, I thought indeed all engagement was that one. I just didn't want. We to have to give up. them a name. You okay. have to label them. Fine. Cool. We don't so want to be communication and engagement. Huh? All right. Do you want me? Is it? My, can you lay? Ah, yes. Now I saw it. Sorry. Convert all in presence activities online. Ah, yeah, that's all engagement, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then these ones are less. Um, by the way, I just received a from yeah. Greg, uh, who's not coming. What about cost effective digital communication versus costly, deep, long term engagement, engaging face to face communication? So that's also communication and engagement. Digital communication. That's also the kind of adapt design to the requirement. Actually, I can do this. I wonder whether that's. Oh. Mm. Part of engagement as well. Well, that's about needs. This one. 
And maybe within engagement, there's like how to engage people in this new online situation and then another is a bit different. So I would say this one, sorry, I'm gonna move things. I think these this, these two for me are about needs almost. Yeah. Yeah. So these two. About understanding needs. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I cannot copy this. This is sort of more, yeah, this is more digital engagement, I would almost say. Mm. Engagement, I would be minded to leave engagement here. Where the... And, and go this one. So we... I find it a bit difficult to follow what we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but go ahead, Kirsten. Uh, you were writing uh, there. What? I was uh, trying to. Okay, Georgia, can you set a one minute reminder? Yep. Effective disorientation. So I would call engagement communication. Okay. Um, mass production of products require different knowledge and distribution. It's like acquiring new capacities, right? Or yeah. I don't know if we want to label it when we're just writing. Um, It'll be back in in twenty six. Maybe we call it needs and context, then we can put in acquiring new capacity. Yeah, then we can put this in here as well, I would say. Okay, then the other one now misses the name, I will put it. Uh, just... we, are, we are good to go, no? Three clusters. Uh, I, I'm, I'm here. Hello. Another time. Okay. <laughs> everybody welcome back everybody yay <laughs> is that um did everybody get like the questions in the chat did that work okay cool did you have a interesting discussion as short as it was a little bit of a, a snippet of insight yeah sure <laughs> Cool. Right. Um, now, let me share my screen again. So, what we're talking about with each other today is um, it's scaling, right? So, scaling up, which is which we might want to think about of kind of maybe doing more of the same and scaling out, doing what we do. And just as a sort of initial prompt, um, I thought it might be quite useful or input um, to just be a little bit reflective of terminology, because I think terminology can be and categories can be quite useful when we sort of when we when we're sort of engaging in new things. So scaling or sort of different meanings, right? So we can think about a simply diffusion of um, innovation, which is sort of spontaneous and undirected and arguably what happened to Facebook. Um, scaling up, um, I think we tend to think about as a process of doing more of the same. So more, more activities maybe in the same organization, in the same urban area, uh, with the same user group and um, Slack tends to be uh, one of those um, technologies that seem to have sort of scaled uh, that, that we think about in terms of scaling that we might all be familiar with. And then scaling out, which we could also call replication, which is basically copying a whole model that's been shown to work and putting that into different contexts. So either with user groups, different user groups or different cities um, in different countries or in the same country. The key that I quite like is McDonald's because it kind of 
shows lots of the lots of the trials and tribulations of um, of what's involved involved even in, in, in scaling out. Um, the scaling is generally a three-stage process and would be interesting for you to kind of maybe think about where you are in that. Um, so that's kind of the initial knowledge and awareness stage where you kind of work out whether the intervention meets the needs, whether it's effective, so whether it does what you like it to do and whether others know about it and how that happens. Then there's sort of process of choosing and decision-making about where and how to scale it. So choosing a location, choosing kind of the process. So there's sort of a number of models, which I'll talk about it later, and thinking about funding. Um, and then there's, there's the implementation stage where um, we're actually taking our, our, our blueprint um, and implementing it elsewhere, implementing it in a new context or scaling it up to the extent that we're reaching many more, many more users. Um, so we have invited you to see some challenges and lessons. Um, and I wanted to about your own scaling journey. And let's bring up this Jamboard, which whilst you were discussing, we've clustered um, into some into some groups, um, which we wanted to sort of play back to you now. Um, and uh, about it, do you want to start talking about kind of the kind of the, I think there's sort of three themes that struck us. We yep. play those back briefly and then continue. Sure. Yeah. Reading through your, well, mostly the challenges that you share, we decided to start from those. We indeed uh, saw three main themes popping out uh, that could create connections among, among different experiences you had. So one at the bottom you see is uh, regarding engagement and communication from the fact of understanding uh, users and how to engage them into what became, of course, an online activity and all the challenges related. And while in the middle you see more the needs, so more focus on understanding the needs of uh, the communities of, or stakeholders that we need to, that you had to uh, get in, in uh, on board in your project. And the last one, uh, but not least, is the acquiring new capacity. So maybe a little bit broader on the, on the scaling process so far. Uh, someone mentioned uh, from Stark Park replicating the process um, how to approach it into uh, different with a different strategy uh, for crowdfunding, for example, and also uh, what new knowledge is required in the case of Tomo Street Debater uh, when it comes to mass production. So uh, a different way to scale uh, the one product that I imagine you initially had. So these are a bit the three themes, and I guess Kirsten, then we we can pass on to. To discuss uh, each of them, right? Yeah. So we, what we wanted to invite, so to know, but hopefully, this sort of the clustering makes sense to the people who brought the challenges. So we wanted to um, invite one or several member of each of the clusters to just explain a little bit more about the challenge, um, and then once we've heard from everybody, um, we can hopefully have a reflection about how these challenges resonate in other in, in other projects and in other groups. So is there somebody who wants to kick off? Silence. Yeah. Okay. I can start if no one else wants to. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Just literally like a minute, explain a little bit more about kind of the point that you put on and then we'll I, to the next cluster. Okay, I'll try. <clears throat> we found um, two challenges. It was quite difficult. One, uh, it's uh, shared with, uh, uh, with Marco, no? that uh, how to, to transform all the activities that were in presence so a workshop in the place or in a, in a, in a, in a space where 
should it be um, adults and children working in two different groups and interacting and co um, co planning and co designing the park to change everything in online activities due to the emergency we are in now now in COVID-19 and uh, the same problem we has uh, we have with uh, the um, difficult to reach stakeholders where our is a park uh, where is that is in, um, in now it's closed at the moment and uh, and there are some problem with problem okay we can we can say do people in see the place like uh, uh, full of migrants that uh, make some strange or maybe not legal activities so the problem is how to uh, to interweave the, these two groups not of the citizens that have uh, some uh, resistance <laughs> to accept that there are other new citizens in the place and uh, these persons that is not easy to reach to involve in online activities so these are the two uh, problem in engagement that we we are facing not solved but we are facing Okay, thank you, Fabio. Great. So let's I would say let's move on and somebody who finds their point being mentioned in the needs challenge. So meeting needs. So there was a whole there was a cluster uh, we thought about of challenges that talk to challenges about meeting kind of like user needs and meeting meeting needs in different contexts. So if you found yourself, um, if you're finding yourself in uh, that class, I can maybe also say like spend a minute or two uh, just yeah. explaining a little bit more. I can say something. So basically in our project, we are uh, pretty sure that we are answering to the need of the niche that we identified because it was our core target group since the beginning, meaning a talented group of people, youngsters in Sicily that are willing and actually looking forward to start this journey with us. But sometimes we are wondering af after this first journey with them, who is going to onboard on this? Like we will have a bigger group of people that are interested in this initiative or it's rather uh, really a niche and there is no really need for replicability in a long term. So that's a question that we are having in mind. And uh, in this moment, due to restriction to COVID, it's also hard to go and uh, uncover the, the youngster that they're not in our like uh, circle of contact. So that's hard to, to like to, to investigate. Right. Thanks, Julia. What about the cluster of acquiring the capacities? Um, is there one of you who can explain a little bit more about that challenge? That's the one on the top center, right? Acquiring new capacities. Yes. Yeah, uh, so I can explain. Uh, so I'm from the street debater team and we at stage three, like we are at the phase of trying to mass produce the same product in a scale of hundreds to send it to multiple cities across Europe. And um, we are currently like facing a lot of issues that we didn't encounter before, uh, such as um, acquiring like materials in a scale causes different problems and also we are, we are trying to make it in a uh, also unique way in a sense that all the 3D printing uh, and laser cutting is done in partnership with a social venture that um, is basically teaching like making skills to vulnerable people. Um, so that also like makes it hard to replicate the same kind of designs in a big scale. So, the, so a slight change of like design can like actually make the product not really work or like change the colors a bit. So um, 
yeah, there's a lot of learnings for me to understand. There's a big difference in between making uh, one of product where the main designer is involved and a mass produced product where like there's no designer involved. There's a, obviously a big difference and that's a lot of like challenges and learning for me. Okay. Great, thank you. Thanks everybody for, for saying a little bit more about those challenges. You'll obviously have the board ready. What I will do now is I think what I would quite, what, I, what might be quite useful um, is to, sorry, let me just let me stay here. Is to help each other with those challenges. Um, that that um, that you've brought. So this is an invitation, really, for the whole group. I'll put those questions in the chat, really, um, to think about and to share whether similar events, whether similar experiences, challenges you've had yourself in your scaling journey, and how did you sort of get around them? So have a conversation with each other. Um, to, to perhaps problem solve or, um, or associate. So this is really over to you. If there sort of, did any of these challenges resonate more um, with others in the group? So I'm just posting there are some questions. So if you think about kind of the needs cluster, um, as, as, as anybody who hasn't brought up needs had a similar, has, has had a challenge about make about sort of user um, user needs, stakeholder needs in different contexts. And what what did, have you guys done about it? And you can read the needs post-its in the Jumbo board, by the way. Otherwise, I think, Kirsten, did we have one of the people that wrote the needs discuss it? So we have, we do have the, like, I can see the challenges and we, we do share them, but unfortunately I don't have any real clever answer to how to solve them though, but there are, they are, yeah. How has anybody else dealt with identifying user needs in different contexts? Let's say if you didn't solve it, what was your approach to at least tackle it? Yeah, we don't need the, the smart answer. <laughs> if, if I am, can think how to solve, so I uh, logically uh, I am a cultural anthropologist, so I will work with imaginaries. So try to grasp or uh, to uh, through uh, ethnographic. Uh, not, I don't like using the word interviews. I like conversation we could uh, just go deeper because we are speaking of, about real motivation on potential and it's the problem we are facing now no uh, the real and the the, the socialized uh, motivation they are different the real if you say real i think something that it's private it's it's of the person maybe is not shared in a in a group, you know, the difference between a, 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 a ethnographic conversation and a focus group, it's uh, really about this. You now the focus group, it's about social point of view, shared point of view. The the ethnographic con ethnographic conversation should try try to with the with the ethnographic conversation, we try to 
go deeper in the, the point of view of the stakeholders. So we choose uh, the um, ex uh, exam people that uh, could represent all the, the group and going in deeper with them. This could be one of the other are the instruments how to share all these uh, interviews and analysis. So there are qualitative uh, uh, instruments and uh, 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 computer assisted qualitative analysis instruments that can share with others. But I'm speaking about research side. So we have to adapt how to in the um, daily in daily work. Sorry for my difficulty in explaining. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, I think that I think that's really interesting. I mean, one um, Georgia, one of the experiences we've had um, with uh, projects grappling with that uh, with that challenge as well is really the sometimes probably the kind of the importance of an almost like anthropological perspective on kind of stakeholder and user needs because what uh, so this is a project that tried to um, move a parenting intervention into into a different context and for having these conversations with the communities directly or community representatives what they found is that almost like the ethos of the intervention or the, the sort of the, the, the theory of change, the, you know, the sort of the approach of the intervention didn't work in that community because actually the core problem it was trying to address, um, it wasn't really an issue. The kind of the problem was really a different one. It was only having those conversations and understanding what it is they were trying to do and um, that they were able to then say, actually, we're not going to take our event intervention to whatever Birmingham we're going to take it somewhere else where it where it suits the context and the kind of community better so um, I, I think um, that that certainly resonates with sort of my my experience of um, of, of, of sort of understanding kind of the nitty-gritty nitty on the ground um, issues I remember Herrick right wanted to add on it did I... Yeah, I can, I can add up. I, don't, I hope I understand the challenge correctly. But when it comes to um, uh, the second posted here on the on the needs uh, that uh, that the conditions are not are different in different con in different contexts, and what to do about that. And I think that one one thing that's I, I think we're trying to do is that we're we're trying to build our scaling strategy. Uh, to not be dependent on what is different between different contexts, but try to build it on what is uh, the actual similarities between different contexts. So, like uh, to to have a, like a real case scenario where where we're scaling our app to different neighborhoods, and we're working with civil society organizations, mm -hmm. and uh, for example, looking at well, what kind of what kind of civil society organizations are are in place in different neighborhoods, and that that varies a lot. But there are some organizations that are present in in at least very many uh, neighborhoods. So um, yeah, try to focus our scaling strategy on the similarities between uh, uh, context rather than the, the differences. That's interesting. And are you finding that the process, though, even though you're looking for similarities rather than differences, is the process pretty much kind of similar to what Fabio describes? That almost even though that that process of finding similarities requires you also to understand what what it is you're trying to do and then work out you know where where the similarities are and how much are you confronted with the decision what you whether you have to make adaptations at all to to your pilot and to your intervention Henrik even though this, you're looking for similarities because just like of subtle differences between communities. I think for our solution, uh, uh, Gilia asked the same questions, question to me and I, for our solution where we're, we're trying to make the, like a, 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 a actually more general solution that is still adapted for all, <laughs> if, you know, if you understand what, I'm, what I mean. So we, are, we, we can't build like act, uh, actually different solutions for different neighborhoods, but 
but yeah. the general solution has to be adaptive. Okay. Uh, yeah. In terms of what, what we're doing is we're trying to help people to to make it easier to to borrow things from each other in the neighborhood. So, for example, in the, in some neighborhoods, perhaps uh, golfing equipment would be like the one, one thing that many people need. And of course, the the the, the service should be like ad adapted to to that to that interest, but it has to be also adapted to other interests that are more prominent mm -hmm. in uh, different uh, neighborhoods. Yeah. And that's just a, just a matter of like making it able to, to scale big. Yeah. I, I think that, that actually reminds me, it speaks to quite a, an important uh, point. I remember picking up on a, on a recent project, which was about how an organization had to, wanted to move in a different area. They had, their project was um, in relation to the prevention of violent extremism in young people. And just by moving, uh, literally not very far away where, where the problem was slightly was was more about knife crime sorry it sounds like a very dull example but they managed it speaks to what you were saying Henrik about slightly shifting the focus using kind of the same idea but slightly shifting the focus of need which was more speaking to knife crime and they I remember the project having to do quite a bit of work in getting into the neighboring area so that they could work with the local stakeholders so I guess the question for me is did you or, or how are you creating I guess those those partnerships with the third sector with local community groups to help you slightly adapt um, and understand I guess the, the the needs of of the different areas or yes, has yes. that been a problem uh, yeah, I mean we have, we have only com come so far yet, but uh, mm. we're we're starting off with uh, like trial trial and error and uh, speaking to different organizations and uh, working with, for example, uh, ethnic the uh, like ethnic uh, organizations mm. and trying well see how that works. And then we got some experience from that. And um, but as I mentioned earlier, I think we're we what we're doing now is to finding. Um, um like some similar organization that has more like of common commonalities between yeah. different neighborhoods so uh, for example if we we know that we need to work with uh, ethnic organizations in in some areas in order to reach uh, uh yeah people not are not born in sweden but uh, and they are they are often connected to um oh, i don't know the english word but uh uh like others, they are also connected to other civil organ, civil society organizations. So rather than making contact directly with the ethnic organization, we go up one level to trying to make partnership with uh, an organization on a, on a higher level that uh, have, a, have a more vast network. I don't know if that, I'm making myself yeah. understandable. But <laughs> Sorry. I was curious to ask, since it doesn't have a name, there's a post it's saying, uh, talking about organizations of adapting to the new administration in the city. So I was wondering first who wrote that and if they wanted to maybe share it. So maybe that's yeah, a challenge was... also common for people. Yeah, oh, Lisa. yeah it's, it was me. It's Agro Plaza Quiriquino, the project. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because as, as our project is related to, to building things, not physical things. Uh, so uh, we we have to deal also with urbanism um, uh, administrations and also with in this case with the town hall because they are also funding the the project and also with the building enterprises not because we we find it better not to have just to have a um like the enterprise that builds the furniture is local. So, yeah, so in this case for us, uh, you know, it's like a, well, it's a challenge of scaling because it's just, well, changing the context. Um, so what we find is that uh, every time, what I was thinking when I was also uh, writing it is that every time you, that you think that you have a project and it's going to be very easy to, to do it again, like, oh, okay, I'm going to replicate it. It's so easy. But as everything changes in the context, because 
uh, you have to change and you have to do it again. So it's not just to replicate it, but you have to rethink everything. And also starting a new relationship with a uh, different administration and also different partners uh, is also a big effort to just not only because of the design of making the design, but, uh, but because starting a new relationship which means knowing how the other partner works, how everything works, what, what, what documents they are going to need in this town hall to in order to approve the project or uh, you know so uh, yeah in our case we are just facing that now because we are in this designing part we have already done the participation part uh, so yeah we, we thought it was going to be easier and and we are finding that is is that we have a lot of work to do now again so yeah. So now you have the municipality to participate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I do wonder whether that links to the point I think Fabio you also made about um, engaging people in online activities. Uh, so doing all of that probably online rather than maybe being able to, you know, have a have a face to face meeting and and how that has an effect on. Uh, quality of the relationships and the ability to, um, I guess, build up the trust and build up the understanding that you need in order to actually replicate and whether people, whether that's an experience that resonates and whether there's sort of any um, ideas about how to work with that. Okay, to me, uh, do I reply? Oh, Sorry, everybody. Anybody. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, like in our case, for example, in this, yeah, in the participatory, we, we made we made it everything essential. So, no much. Just uh, the only thing we made um, online was uh, like a formulary, like a yeah, some some questions. So it was easy. There is a, a post-it that it's catching my attention. No, it's the the cost-effective digital communication versus costly, deep, long-term engage face-to-face. -face. So I, I I feel like if we are just going around this point, but sometimes we the rather the, the I call it the illusion that uh, we can uh, with digital communication we can do everything, but we need to go uh, to to work more in this really costly uh, digital communicate oops I don't know because well, something happened um, like the mm, I call net weavers the, the people it's going to build nets to connect the, the, the points and work like really uh, craftsmen so craft women in uh, in building relation, no. Uh, so uh, seems that this this uh, post-it is just a problem and a solution. I don't know if. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. What do the other thing, especially in a moment like this one? Do you guys felt capable of creating connections, networks online, or that you that you will be, or you feel you need human? How do you call it, Fabio? Uh, in well, in presence contact with people. Okay, just now it's not possible in presence, but we can think to build. Uh, uh, connection that are not in present but are not just social communication, website communication, um, Instagram communication. This is not working. Uh, I was looking at the, at the statistics of uh, descriptions of our, our online workshop next Saturday and uh, nearly 40% um, come from phone calls, mails, and not from direct Evan Bright subscriptions no 
So this is something that people want to speak with somebody now more than before, but speak with a voice on the other side. Now, maybe it's just something to, to think about. Thanks. Yeah, so it was me who wrote that challenge about, uh, yeah, those digital means of communications versus more face-to-face -face methods. And uh, yeah, it's a challenge. And I think that uh, in regular times, when you're able to combine them, they're, combine them, there's no like, real issue because you can't be based only on face-to-face -face communication because it's so, it's so costly in time and money. But uh, uh, so you need to combine it with uh, like digital means of communication. But in these times, we're sort of like left with only <laughs> digital communication, and that's that's a real that's a real challenge for us. I think. Yeah. So that's something that we're really str struggling with. So, but if you can combine it, then it's okay. But now nowadays, it's difficult. And did you follow a similar strategy to what Fabio was saying, like phone calling people, like having more one one on one uh, communication with them? Yeah. So we don't. We our problem is that we don't have that like initial information about them. So we oh. were not reaching out in in how do I say in the middle of nowhere or how do I say? Yeah. We do have we do have a partner like uh, say we're, we're working with a housing company as a partner, and they of course do have contact information to their tenants, yeah. but okay. due to the GDPR GDPR they can't uh, they can't give it to us or they can't even they can't even use it themselves uh, in other the ways that they have like uh, yeah said that they would when people sign up. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I feel I wanted to, I think, so what, what you've brought as challenges, um, what are my associations, um, are both as complex as I imagined they would be, <laughs> um, and for want of a different association, as normal um, as as they can be. So, based, so what I wanted to perhaps now let me just um, start off. I'm going to just like start off in a, in a slightly different way. I wanted to start off slightly slightly self-referential, but I think it's perhaps helpful with this quote from one of our, from one of our, um, oops, from one of our works on replication, which basically, having looked at loads and loads of replication projects, basically what we concluded is that there's certain characteristics which I think you've all displayed, so openness to innovation, strong learning culture, um, and a serious strategic interest in evidence phase of working. So once you've got that, actually, that there's a sort of strong, these are very strong predictor of successful replication. Um, so I wanted to start off with this just to kind of, in a, in a sort of positive, um, on, a, on, a, on an encouraging note, perhaps, because we've talked a lot about challenges. But what I also wanted to do um, to perhaps round off the session is to just spend a few minutes just talking about um, giving some, some framing, maybe around scaling and the, and the, and the challenges um, that you're experiencing, that you've heard. Um, and I've called them sort of building blocks of successful scaling, if you like. I think the whole question about knowing, understanding needs in different contexts, kind of all understanding similarities um, even, um, as we are developing the blueprint for scaling. So the blueprint, basically the kind of the item, the artifact, I guess, or the, the, the pilot that we are looking then to take elsewhere. Um, 
one of the things that really helped, and those who've listened into our theory of change session that we did early last year might forgive us for talking about it again. Um, but what really does help, um, especially if, if when you are in a sort of moving iterative process, is to think in theory of change terms. And because that really it's, is, a, is a system which can be quite simple of linking, I guess, the problem that you're looking to address via a route of activities and outputs and outcomes to the impact. And actually once you've, and it's surprising, it, whilst it's linear here and looks quite simple, in the process, it can be really difficult to actually articulate and complete. But where it's really valuable is that as you're progressing through your scaling, through the process of scaling your blueprint, what you can add in, you can modify the different elements of the theory of change to reflect the different contextual needs. So you've got maps almost of how this blueprint of yours is going to work in different, in different contexts. Kirsten, sorry to interrupt. Is it possible that you uh, are sharing some screens with us that we only yeah. see? Yeah, oh, I'm not, I'm sharing. You can't see it. No, we no, see, we see the oh. Google Jamboard. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, oh, gosh, I'm really sorry. Oh, dear. In Zoom, it, it, it does not really help the speaker in that sense because you can move, but it just pauses the-, the Can screen. you see now? No, ah. yeah. Oh, there you go. So my lovely quote, uh, my motivational quote. You didn't see. Oh, we'll, we'll bring it up again at the end. So I'm really sorry. <laughs> right, there you go. It's okay. Thanks, Alicia, for, <laughs> for pointing that out. Right, okay. So this is the theory of change model that I've been going on about. Um, which you may, if you've listened in to our, to our talk, uh, but there's a, there's a link also at the end of the slide deck, which we'll get to it. Um, so, so as simple as it looks, it's a really useful, it's a really useful tool just to really know, know what it is you're doing and how you're going to achieve what it is you, you, you're looking to, to achieve and how to modify it. Now, why this is important, we've talked about this a lot actually, is this whole block of sort of adaptation and iteration because as everybody is usually aware in this room, um, I think even when we're talking about finding similarities between contexts, there are probably tweaks we need to make to, um, to the blueprint once it's there. And we like to talk about that as sort of finding the absolute core of the intervention or of your, of your design-enabled innovation, the, your blueprint. So the thing that you can sell, the thing that makes it unique, the thing the set of activities or branding or people that makes it unique, but also that ensures that ultimately the outcomes that you're looking to achieve are going to be achieved in every single context. So every intervention, uh, sorry, I'm an evaluator, so I talk about interventions. So any project, any innovation has got that, that sort of core aspect, which makes which, which can't be changed, and then bits around it which have to be modified in order to make it work. The thing about the adaptation is that some things will be obvious. So, you know, if you're moving a, in, an, an innovation from Sweden, let's say to Italy, clearly you need to work with language. But the tricky thing about adaptation is actually there's a whole set of elements that we won't know what we have to modify and just be having those conversations that you're already having with the stakeholders and the modifications might, might be different in different contexts so once we've got the theory of change um, model in place we can populate it with changes we can create sort of variations per context and through these variations we understand what the core of the blueprint is that we, that, we, that we must not change. And that's really useful then, you know, thinking ahead in sort of different contexts and that kind of gives an advantage knowing, okay, these, these things are immovable, I can't change them. Um, data is really useful. So my assumption is that as designers, um, innovators, you're constantly collecting a range of data from your stakeholders, from your end users. So 
having a framework, again, the theory of change, we to plug that data in um, and to monitor changes in activity, changes in audiences, possibly changes in outcomes if you're moving into evaluative space is really helpful to quality check, um, to quality check and intervention, your innovation, um, and also then work out what aspects you can modify to not affect the integrity um, of, the, of the project and which ones you can modify um, for it to flourish elsewhere. Um, slightly. So then the last point I wanted to perhaps make in this context is just think about yourself <laughs> um, and your organization a little bit in the process. So once you're worked out your blueprint and you're taking it elsewhere, um, think about the motivation. Why are you taking it elsewhere? Is it to test it? Is it simply testing? Is it to grow your business um, or your organization? Um, is it to form partnerships? And depending on those motivations, those motivations will have impacts on um, the sort of business model uh, that you're using for future scaling. So you might think about franchising, licensing, um, or simply partnerships. Uh, but it has, and these in turn have got implications for um, internal skills um, sets and the number of people and how work is being organized. Um, and this cultural element um, is kind of, is, is the one that I started off. Um, let me just give that, um, give that quote again as a closing um, to uh, perhaps this, uh, to perhaps this session. Um, because I do think it encapsulates the characteristics of the design scapes pilot projects that we've met so far extremely well. So this kind of openness to innovation, um, a learning culture and a, will it, and a willingness and interest to, to, to iterate. Um, and also sort of quite um, an interest in I think sort of data as well. And that um, we found are sort of really good uh, conditions for, for scaling um, and making scaling a, a success. And this is the reason why it's so hard. Um, this is a model which brings together the evidence space, um, if you like, quite simply about the factors that matter in scaling. Um, and why it's so hard, it's that it's a sort of systems, it's an open systems process. And that's why um, it always takes longer. We need to, we need to take risks um, and uh, work really hard on relationships to make it work. So this is the framing um, of the scaling. Um, Alberto and Elisa, we're very mindful that we didn't have much time in this hour. So it was perhaps a taster and, and, and some start for conversation. And I think Alberto and Elisa, you've got um, an offer um, and exploration about where to potentially continue. Yeah, indeed. So we are aware that in one hour we couldn't solve all the scaling uh, strategies and processes of, uh, of each of your projects. But we aim at bringing it up and possibly opening up and detailing some of the challenges that you guys may have in your own uh, single context. So what would we ask you is, uh, we would like to you know, follow up and use this chance to uh, frame and define uh, further meetings, maybe more focused on specific challenges that you may have uh, popped out today or uh, that may have come across your mind listening to others. So the question would be, um, if we are then to, to make a follow-up, is there anything, any topic in specific that you would like us to uh, focus on do, so that we could create these focus groups uh, in the maybe next week or even following uh, training modules? But do you want to give people the chance to think about it and, e and send back by email or do you, would you like some reflections sure. now? Well, if you, if you have anything already on top of your mind, please feel free to, to share it. Otherwise, of course, uh, it would be lovely to, to receive it even uh, by email, maybe uh, later in these days. But, but also, honestly, just to simplify things, it's more if 
uh, you guys that are here. I know a lot of people had to leave time wise, but yeah. if you would be interested to continue talking about this, uh, about this type of thing, so hearing each other on the challenges you've had with scaling and the solutions you may apply. Fabio was saying, no. Fabio needs to leave or wants to talk? I think people have to leave. Yes. Okay. Well, if you have time to quickly do the poll, that hopefully this popped up, and that would be great. If you don't, um, I'm mindful we've gone over, and um, that's fine. Um, thanks very much for joining us. Um, I hope it was a little bit useful, um, and hopefully the conversation can con continue um, in other formats. And do let um, Alicia and Taberto know. Um, so. Uh, you can get the help and the kind of input that is useful. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.